There's a lion here to the left. Don't miss him. Lions are inactive. 16 to 20 hours per day. They do nothing but rest and conserve energy. Brilliant blue and red markings on their faces. Walking along the wall. You see them? The dominant male can be 100 pounds. The females are smaller at about 30 pounds. In this portion of the reserve, we're going to start looking for elephants. Unfortunately, our regular road that we take over to see them washed out with the recent storms. So we're going to have to take an old maintenance bridge. We can only have one of these trucks on the bridge at a time, so we have to wait for the one in front of us to clear. There's a light up here that tells me when I can go. Elephants do live in herd groups. They are primarily female family groups. Males stay together throughout their entire lives, but males will leave the herd as teenagers to strike out on their own and have a more solitary existence as adults. The herd is usually led by the most experienced female family member. You can get an idea of which one that is by looking at the tusks. The longer an elephant's tusks are, the older the elephant is. Grevy zebra, they're the type of zebra with the white belly. The stripes don't go all the way around. They have a white belly and a white band around their nose. And they have rounded ear tips. Here, in the red clay, you can see some signs of elephants, tusk marks and footprints. Elephants enjoy red clay as a snack. It helps cool them off when they're warm but it also gives them essential minerals in their diet that they don't get from the grasses they eat, so it's actually good for them to eat. Disney Wildlife Conservationists have been working with African farmers to keep elephants out of their crops without harming the elephants, and what they've done is incorporated beehives into a new fencing system. It uses honeybees. If the elephants come near the crops and disturb that fence, the bees will swarm out of the hives, which makes a terrible noise. Honeybees don't sting, so they don't hurt the elephants. But this noise they don't like, and they will leave the area without entering the fields. It's been highly successful, keeping the elephants out without hurting them. And the elephants will share the news of where they've discovered bees with other elephants they meet, and those elephants will also avoid the area. Very successful. Some giraffe here off on the right. A group of giraffes is called a tower. Giraffes. Moving up out here on the left are some greater flamingo. They're the largest variety of flamingo, and the palest color pink of any variety. Does anybody know what color they are when they hatch from an egg? Gray or white? Both are correct. It can be either. It takes them about a year and a half to change over to the pink color. It's a result of the food they eat. Do you remember what they eat? Shrimp, right. It's the beta carotene in shrimp that gradually changes them over to the pink color. It's going to be a poacher stand. It's been placed here by the warden as a reminder that poaching endangers elephants and rhinos. They pursue the animals relentlessly. Unfortunately, high These are white rhinos to our left. They get to be about 5,000 pounds at maturity. They are significantly larger than black rhinos. 
White is actually a mispronunciation of the Afrikaans word, which means wide, describing their mouth rather than their color. They have a broad, wide mouth, which they use to force to eat grass here in the savannah. The black rhino has a narrow mouth with a pointed upper lip for picking leaves in the forest. Different diet. Both are heavily sought after for their horns. Their only known predator is humans. 60 for about 200 yards before they become winded, running down game. They're the largest cat that can purr, but they do not meow. They make a chirping sound, rather like a cricket, rather than a meow. You never want to play cards with them. There's another one up on the hillside here, up in the shade. Because they're cheetahs. All the way in the back with the spots. Cheetahs also have non-retractable claws. Their claws are out at all times. In front of us is a kopi, which is a rock formation projecting out of the savanna. Gives a great vantage point over the savanna for predator or prey. Offensive or defensive capabilities, depending on who occupies it. Addicts can go two to three months without a drink of water. They're able to get the water they need to survive right out of the food they eat. Whatever the water content is, they get. There's some more of the white rhinos. Those are plains or grand zebra there with them. They're the variety of zebra with stripes that go all the way around their bodies. No two zebra have the same stripe pattern. They're unique like fingerprints are for humans. The brown antelope are called bontabak. They come from Tanzania and they are highly endangered. They are a conservation project in the works at the moment and throughout the world. There's a lion here to the left. Don't miss him. Lions are inactive 16 to 20 hours per day. They do nothing but rest and conserve energy. Eventually, it is usually the females that go hunting, and the male stays behind as protection for the pride of cubs. The Swahili word for lion is Simba. Simba means lion. These are warthog burrows here to our left, and the warthogs are over near the rock pile in the center. They're down on the ground, not up on the hillside, but down on the level ground. They kind of look like fuzzy logs there in the shade. There's two of them nestled right next to each other. They slip into those burrows at night, face out with their razor sharp tusks, ready to defend themselves. These ostriches are, of course, the largest bird. They stand six to up to nine feet tall. They're too heavy to fly, but they use their wings as rudders to help them turn. They run about 35 to 40 miles per hour. And their eggs are over here. There's some eggs. The eggs are three to four pounds each, the equivalent of about two dozen chicken eggs in volume. Very heavy. Savannah and head over to another ecosystem called Mugabe Glen, which is like North Africa in terrain. More hills and more water than we find out here in the savannah. Slightly different vegetation. the water. These are yellow-billed stork. Yellow-billed stork are carnivorous birds. They eat reptiles, amphibians, and fish. If you're interested in Disney wildlife conservation programs, please see a villager in Harambe. They can give you the latest information on programs that help animals like elephants and rhinos. Or the Bontabak, that we just met. 
you know they had a special program this summer in conjunction with the Finding Dory movie to benefit the animals of the coral reef. Species like sea turtles, crush and squirt from the movie. And if I have any wilderness explorers on board, the name of my truck is Simba One. Simba One to get the merit badge for Safari. It's the one on page 13 of your handbook. You may also be able to get the African Cultural Experience badge. Affection station out there where you can pet animals and you can learn something about conservation out there as well. It's about a five minute train ride from the Harambe train station. Well, here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye to our guests. Instead, we say Kwaharini, which is Swahili for go well. We want you to go well and be well. Do stay hydrated, drink lots of water. It is hot out there. Enjoy the rest of your stay here in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Thanks so much for riding the safari. My name is Sue. If you have any questions. You can find more from the Fresh Bake Network at Fresh Bake Presents for ride-throughs, commentary, and other features, or at Fresh Bake Disney for our secrets and history videos and coverage of the Star Wars land construction from the Knothole Gang. Oh, and don't forget you can help support Fresh Bake by joining our Patreon campaign or by buying a Fresh Bake t-shirt. We truly are the best of Disney. Bake Fresh daily. Thanks a lot, everyone. Fresh Bake! Fresh <laughs> Bake!